They say there are plenty of fish in the sea, Sorry. but just how many of them will reel you into their lives before you notice the red flag? Joining us this morning is Samantha Correa. Did I say that properly? Yep. Samantha okay. Korea. There we go. Uh, she's sharing her dating experience that turned out to be a nightmare. Okay. okay. Welcome to the show. Thank you for doing this. You know, the whole place is a buzz here to hear your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's kind of embarrassing to talk about, but happy to share my story with everyone who will listen. Let yes. it be. Let it be a learning experience, folks. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so you shared your dating catfish story on TikTok. Yeah, it went viral. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, I guess. I, I, mean, I don't know <laughs> what the right sentiment is there, but yeah, thank you. All right, start from the very yeah, beginning. I got to hear we it. We want to know. So I matched with this guy on Bumble. He immediately wanted to move to WhatsApp, and I travel a lot internationally for work, so okay. that wasn't... Um, he, he, he wanted to talk on WhatsApp, so I thought this is normal like he's from Poland he needs to get his visa sorted so he wanted a stable way to talk and so mm -hmm. um, he told me that it was he would be gone for two weeks to get his visa sorted in Poland and um, I spent I was kind of hung over when I met him so mm. it, it was a Sunday and I spent all of Sunday talking to him 12 hours I think holy moly it was a lot yeah, it, yeah. I will say that was not what I usually do I don't I definitely don't talk to people that I don't know for that long uh -huh. But it was an interesting circumstance. He was a handsome man. Sure. Or his pictures, his yes. pictures were handsome. Yes. Quote unquote. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Um, so then I woke up the next morning. He had sent me like a five paragraph long text. Well. And professing his love for me, a man that I had never known, okay. met in person. And I was like, here's the thing it was definitely love bombing, but. I that's why I don't think catfishing is necessarily a confidence problem for the victim. I was like, oh, it makes sense that he's fallen for me. Of course, I'm great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that confidence for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was a little bit self-inflated, but uh, I that was when the red flag started raising, mm -hmm. that long profession of love. And I was like, I, said, I screenshotted it to my friends, and I was like, this is weird, guys, right? This is weird. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And so... I kind of like wrote, was like, whatever, but my friend, the FBI agent of the group, <laughs> went on a hunt uh -huh. and found that this man was using a Polish influencer's pictures. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, at what point does this, the trip to Spain come into the story here? This is a separate, completely separate incident. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. so, so not once, but twice. I was not catfished for that Spain trip. Okay. So, and here's, and here's the other reason I believe the catfish, I... Uh, last year, I, I matched with a man on Bumble. Mm -hmm. He asked if I wanted to fly to Spain for our first date, and I said yes. And it turned out to be a really great trip. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it was fantastic. I All mean, right. nothing really happened from that. Like, okay. it was a it was a Spain love affair, but mm. the only one of those in our life. Okay, okay, it was nice. So, a little uh, eat, pray, love moment. I don't know. That's, so why, I, that's why I thought, oh, uh, now I can have a Polish love affair. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. So, oh. so, so, so the, that happened, it was real, and then you run into a situation where it's not real. Sure. Yeah, okay. that's exactly what happened. Well, we want to bring in a matchmaking and dating expert, our friend Susan Trombetti. Susan, can you talk to us about how we can tell we're being catfished, especially on one of the biggest days for online dating mm -hmm. coming up in the new year? Yes. Yes. So here's the thing. We've talked before about, you know, the red flags that you are being catfished, but let's talk about how we can figure out now that we're being catfished. So obviously like love bombing is one of the signs that you're being catfished, but I'm going to give you a couple of tips that you can do at home. Uh, first of all, there are GPS coordinates on most photos. If you find that your love interest has stripped all the GPS coordinates off of the photos, and, and people can be private, but they miss them sometimes, that is one of the tip-offs that you are being catfish. So don't fly to Poland, right? Mm. And then um, one of the second ones, a big one, and this you know is something that you can do, reverse Google image the photo. So before, um, Samantha ever got on the plane if she had done that she would have found the Polish influencer so you don't really need to be like an FBI agent you just kind of need to be mm. able to check it out and the next thing is when you google someone and this is something that everybody does they google their date and a lot of times they think that they're in the clear when they get nothing 
But, you know, in DC, you might find that because a lot of people have a clearance and so they don't leave a big digital footprint. So these aren't always the case, but mostly the case all the time. And a couple of these together will let you know that you are being catfished. So a lack of a digital footprint is huge. Um, you know, because if they're a mass murderer, they're not gonna put, give you their real name. So you need to be careful there. Um, one of the next things is, and you know, her guy was out of the country. That's a tip off that you're being um, catfished, but you wanna get this person offline as quick as possible and into a real date. And, and if they cancel with some outrageous reason, that's another way that mm. you know you're being, you know, um, catfished. And so you need to really watch it. If you Google, um, you know, reverse their phone number, a lot of times they will give you details along the way. So I had a lady that gave a detail and he goes, oh yeah, when he ran off to Turkey and canceled the date last minute, oh. he said, oh, I can get a, I can, you know, I have my cell phone, I can go anywhere. So I Google reversed it. It was a landline and that was a lie right there. So there are all sorts of things you could do keep notes of mm -hmm. what they're saying because these are professional cons and Ugh. they are going to come back and say, I never said that. And they're so good at it. They'll have you convinced that you're crazy. So these are some ways that you can, <clears throat> everybody's gonna, if they're online, someone's gonna attempt to catfish you. But these are ways, and if you experience several of these things happening, or even, I mean, one of them, you reverse and goes back to someone else's name. And you know, the last thing that you can do the average person without hiring a private investigator, you know, when you've kept these notes, you have all these little details. So you might have an email address, whatever. So you plug them into social catfish or instant check me hmm. or, you know, Spokio and you can really go down a rabbit hole, but you might pick up other details and in your notes you see, and you might find real social media accounts on the person that is really catfishing you and not the person you think they are. This is fascinating yeah. in a in a terrifying way. Yeah, I would definitely be that person that would have to. Keep I am very afraid I'd right forget. now. I'd Susan, forget. thank you. Well, don't be because <laughs> I just gave you these ways to figure yes, it yes. out. I mean, thankfully I'm locked down, but <laughs> for everybody else that isn't, I mean, this is this is serious. Thankfully you are okay. I mean, yeah. that's what that's what matters really the most here. But Susan, thank you for your expert uh, advice and tips. Yeah. Samantha, yeah. thank you so much for joining us this morning. <laughs>